Hey everybody, sorry I'm late. Hilariously, I have been thinking I've been painting Cable today, but I, when I actually looked at it, I am painting uh, Punisher, so there you go. Uh, pretty funny. Uh, it looks very similar <laughs> mini-wise. Um, and I think I'm assuming, um, I mean, I remember, I think Rodney <clears throat> Smith wanted uh, Punisher included. So he was one of the last ones, but that's hilarious. Whole time thinking I'm doing um, Cable. Cable's one of the X-Men one, next batch of stuff, which I still have only just done the first 10 of. Hope everybody's doing well. Hey, Joe King. Uh, hey, Dim. I'm gonna try to have fun painting. Uh, it's, I'm excited about, uh, I, I was really having fun on um, Moon Knight. I'm gonna finish Moon Knight up, well, mostly finish it up um, today, and then I'll get on to uh, Punisher, hilariously. If I just looked at it, I would have known. There's the, uh, oh, I guess I can cut to the table. Uh, let's do what that is here. Is that that? Nope. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. I got back to starting soon, don't I? Ugh. There we go, let's cut to that. There we go. Um, silly. Uh, so they announced today that the next campaign will not be Marvel, it's going to be DC United, which uh, we all kind of figured was the case. I was hoping it would be Star Wars. I mean, I guess they got to give DC some equal time, but we've had four years or three years of this, because uh, I think the last one was, it, w it was last year, and those are due in June, and then the new Kickstarter for DC United is in July, and hilariously, I will probably back them. Um, even though I'm not that much of a DC guy, uh, I mean, I'm not that much of a Marvel guy either, um, Star Wars, as I said. Uh, let's see. So I do have to go to the dentist today. It's semi-annual checkup, unfortunately. I, it's fine. I don't mind going to the dentist. I've never really had any problems. I just don't want to go because I got so much stuff to do. I have, this is my last paint stream for a couple of weeks. Uh, and we are off to Dallas for the, uh, conveniently, it's the same time as the eclipse. Um, and it's, that's one of the areas that will be a total eclipse. I think where we're going to actually be will not be as long, but it will be a total eclipse. So that's going to be exciting. Nikki will really have fun with that. Um, hey, Ranadar, DC Heroes. Well, I mean, they look cool. I'm already like, they showed a picture. Uh, Nick uh, Murphy sent me the link today. It's going to be on, um, it's going to be on uh, GameFound. Uh, and that's exciting, you know, I mean, different, I, I don't know if I've backed anything on GameFound. I'm not really too much of a backer. I back a few things occasionally, um, but I know that Simon uh, had said that they were going to be doing their stuff exclusively on uh, GameFound, which will be cool. Uh, let's see here, Scott's messaging me too. Um, so we're doing that, and then we're going to go to the Gathering of Friends for a little under a week, or I guess a week, um, which will be fun. And uh, then we come back home. I think I'll be doing a paint stream on Tuesday when we return. I return on Monday, but Tuesday I'll do a paint stream, and Thursday Nikki and I will be doing a Game Night Live. And the hope is that we'll be playing something new that we uh, got it. Star Wars would be dope to 100%. I would, I, I just, here's the reality. I just want to change. I mean, I have no problem with DC. I love, I mean, I do love Superman. I do love Wonder Woman. It looks, I was saying, oh, I was getting to the picture. Um, I, uh, Nick sent me the picture and, um, I mean, I saw Wonder Woman. I'm like, okay, I'm buying it. Uh, let's see here. So I guess this is the game found image or the, the marketing image, right? But they look, all three look great. And Batman's cool too. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, hey, look at that. Follow the project and get an exclusive metal Two-Face coin with your pledge. Ooh, I think I better do that. I, I, so I was painting last week the uh, Ant-Man, and the quarter is just like the, the best thing in this miniature. <laughs> I mean, it's great. Uh, Nick was saying that this is the one that con convinced him to get in, involved in the, um, the uh, Marvel United. But uh, I'm, I'm not as crazy about DC. I think Scott's probably more interested in DC than I am. But, uh, but I'll back it. I, you know, I'm crazy. 
It's cool. I don't know what that character is supposed to be. Oh, it says Two Face, but I wonder what that's supposed to be on there. Like what character? It's got to be a character, right? Maybe it's just Two Face. Um, but 1922, huh? So yeah, there you go. There's there's another four hundred dollars down the drain, probably. Uh, <laughs> I suppose I don't I don't have to do it, but uh, I probably will. Uh, how many Marvels have I painted today? Oh my gosh, Joe, I've probably painted a hundred and something so far. Um, because, you know, I'm only, let's see, how many am I away from being done here? Well, that's not c c completely correct. This is just Marvel United first batch. I've only done 10 of X-Men. I have an additional 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I have 14 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I have 20 figures left. So but I've also painted, I've been painting extra figures, um, and I painted, uh, let's see. Uh, so two, two, yeah, I'm doing two of everything right now. A friend of ours who is not a painter um, was saying he wanted to get his stuff painted, and so I said, get yours to me right away. Now, I was already like 80 miniatures in, at least, uh, but get, get them right away, because then I'll just paint them simultaneously. Uh, and I've done a few so far, uh, quite a few. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I also painted 10 of the um, Spider-Man, Spider-Geddon, I think it was called, box set. So that's, those are done, basically. Uh, I kind of want to shoot a game night with that, maybe when I return. Um, because, you know, they're going to be delivering. Those are available. You can actually buy Spider-Geddon. It was a independent of the campaign of the um, most recent uh, multiverse one. It was independent of that. Um, which they said during the campaign, we're going to release a box that's not going to, you know, because they've, they, the first time they released Marvel, they did Marvel United, and then they, after the campaign said that they were going to release to retail way early. So, way before you get the rest of the stuff. So, I paid too much uh, to get the game delivered early, and then I heard bad things about the game. Now, I actually didn't hear that. Scott did. And, um, it wasn't that it was uh, terrible, but it wasn't that great. But it turns out what it was was somebody saying, don't expect too much. Like, maybe don't build it up so much. Because it is a lighter game. It's very light. Um, it's fun and simple. But once we played it, we're like, oh my gosh, I'm all in on this. And that basically happened... I cannot remember. I think I had already started painting them. But the uh, second Kickstarter was going, and I was only getting the... Main box and Deadpool, I think, you know, which would have given me all the extra minis, you know, the uh, stretch goals. But I ended up not only getting the thing, I bought it. So I, what happened was, is we went and played it with a friend, then we went to, uh, who we hadn't seen in years, um, and we went to a game store near us called Emerald Knights, and they had all of the stuff, and they had the deluxe tiles for the locations which were just instead of the cardboard ones they were nice big flat ones to be the, the main point because they were actually relatively thin um and they uh so i bought them they were 20 dollars, which is what it cost in the campaign that was active at the time and i was like wow i like these i guess i'll just buy them and so i backed all the old cardboard because i don't think I don't know if they did the villain locations in that first one, but regardless, they did, I mean, the villain panels, but they did do everything. So I bought all the old cardboard that I did not get. I think I bought the mat. I didn't buy the play mat in the first one because I felt it was going to be too big for our table. Um, now that we have that play mat, I'm super happy I bought it. I, I kind of, I don't need the new one that they did. They did the, the second, the one in the third campaign was slightly smaller which would have been great, but you don't place your cards on the mat, which ultimately is a good thing, I think, because, you know, it has positions, so it's very easily spaced and you're very clear. Um, but, yeah, because we played it a couple, quite a few times on our live streams, and we've used that mat, and I really like it. So I, I went all in, and, you know, even though I said I wasn't going to do it, and, and that's got to be $800 or $700, I think, total. And then uh, I just did the uh, multiverse, which is, you know, I, I saw the Captain Carter, and I was like, I want this. And so I ended up going all in. Um, 
And I was going to try not to, but I, I'm pretty certain I'll be doing the same thing with the DC. It's cool, though. Uh, Spider Geddon is great, Randadar. Uh, here's some of the ones I did. Uh, this is a Superior Spider Man. He turned out really cool. Um, I had real fun painting this one. And it still could do a little bit more highlighting, but I, this is my like most shaded um, Marvel United figure, and I really like it. I also really liked Spider Punk. Um, goodness, they're all stuck together over here. I, I reorganized the desk a couple weeks back. But yeah, I like Spider Punk. I did a Sunburst guitar. <laughs> I just was like, there was so much red. I'm like, I, because, you know, I basically follow the Big Child Creatives. I, he was at, um, one of the main guys was there at uh, AdeptCon. I do wish I was there to meet him. I really like his stuff. Um, but yeah, I love the Spider Geddon stuff. There's more. Oh, Silk is pretty great. And then I think this is the biggest mini I've painted. It is. I've not done the Sentinels yet because I haven't done X-Men, but this was the Penny Parker and SD slash PR or whatever it is. Uh, turned out pretty cool. It's not quite done. Her face is still kind of dark. Oh, and I love this one too. I'm sorry. Keep going on and on, but this was the, um, the uh, Spider Noir. Um, thanks, Ranadar. I, I try. I'm, I'm a pretty decent painter. Um, my issue is I'm not fast enough, but... I did these two in the stream uh, entirely. This is everything I did on the last stream. And I really, am, I like them. They're not quite done, but they're close. And you really, they could be, this is it. it. I don't have to do anymore, but I did this little bit here on the side that gives some visual, you know, variation. And it was part of the, uh, of um, Big Child's paint. And I was like, oh, I like that. So I did it. Uh, I actually do not know why I stuck him on here already, because he will not be first. But hilariously, thinking he's Cable, it's the big gun, I think, that got me, but uh, I didn't look at his chest. It would have been very obvious. Um, so yeah, I got a little bit of touch-up to do here. Like, I I went in and put a little bit of, uh, I got black, or there was the Pacilicon of Grey on the cowl, and so I want to cover that up. Um, thanks, Joe King. I'm, I'm having fun. I really like them. It's, this is why, I mean, the problem is, is me buying another 80 figures or 100 figures on the next campaign is insane. I already have, I'm looking at a mountain of miniatures in front of me. Somebody was joking that they had, I can't remember, British guy, State to, state of Play or something like that. Really, his is a pretty good uh, uh, YouTube channel. Um, he was saying I got like a, be, uh, a, a games workshop store. I, I'm, I'm worse than that. I actually have multiple, multiples of many things too, so. Uh, starting with the third edition. I have like three boxes of the third edition, I think. Um, and I haven't really played it in ages in Warhammer. Uh, and I would love to. I mean, I've played... That's not fair. i played some stuff. i played um, some of the things i painted. Uh, Warhammer Underworlds, which is actually probably my really favorite stuff, even though I love the, uh, the sci-fi. Um, I just love the nature of those kits. They're not very big. And... Um, you know, you get f up to basically five miniatures, and uh, that's a lot. To me, that's plenty. Um, I do. I did paint 40K stuff recently because I did the Tyranid, uh, Termagants, and the some of the Space Marines. I need to finish those because actually we want to try to play that on the show, and it would be great because I have not played 40K in at least 10 years. Uh, actually, more than that, probably. Um, so yeah, I would love to play it. Anyway, let's get some paint. I did put everything away. I had a terrible mess of paints because I was painting in the house and I brought it all inside. Well, I brought some of it, not all of it. There's too much paint, but I brought some of it. And it, that's the one reason why I don't like painting in two different places. Uh, hey, uh, how you doing, um, a berry? Uh, just say no, Lincoln. That's true. I wish I'd say no, but I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm a crazy person. I know it. I really need to. I mean, I have a lot of Warhammer Underworlds. I'm looking at all the little tiny expansion boxes, and I stopped like three or four sets ago. Even though I bought a couple of the sets, um, like maybe one of. Uh, I definitely got one from myself. I bought at uh, Staples, and then G GW sent me. 
a couple of their sets, like three of their recent sets, including, well, they sent me Space Marine, the board game, and then the, um, they gave me uh, at Ch Spiel the, um, the introductory set. That's where I was painting the ter Termagants and the um, Space Marines. And uh, gosh, they've given me more. But I have like Shade Spire, Beast Grave, Night Vault, the two player one, maybe one other two player one. You know, like not two player. Yeah, it is two player star set. I could have swore I had one more. I could. These are deep. Uh, I don't know. It seems like that's it. So maybe not. Might be it. But then I have a ton of, you know, I have up through Beast Grave, not all of those by a long shot because I kind of lost. That happened at the beginning of the pandemic. And I lost track of time and didn't, you know, like didn't realize that they had done um, more. And, uh, you know, just because I wasn't really paying attention to it all. We had too many other things. We were actually live streaming uh, game conventions in 2020 when we couldn't go to the cons. And that was actually fun. You know, we basically, you know, we had our um, BGG had their uh, convention um, online, uh, Virtual Con 2020, which was fun. And uh, the we didn't really pay attention to stuff like that. I mean, most of it, we kept getting a lot of games and Nikki and I had to deal with learning and um, learning and just doing, uh, uh, looking at tons of games. Because uh, they were all, we had probably the most Spiel 2020 uh, games here because we they were sending them to us for the live stream which was cool it just ultimately not enough people watch uh and so we didn't continue we actually kind of stopped doing all that stuff matter of fact i had to paint i swear i have a plastic edition hey joking i do too um i've gone in all on the speed paints they do a good job you know ranadar that's what i mostly use i mean i i have some standard acrylics but i've over the years i actually got rid of a bunch of them um because uh I want to get something new. I probably, uh, the GW ones are fine. I still keep buying some. I recently bought uh, Averland Sunset and this red, which is an orange in my opinion, Wild Rider Red. Um, and I, uh, gotta change glasses. I would, um, I don't know. I'm thinking about the new army painters. They're supposed to be pretty good and then uh, I, I mean, I know they're not everything because I also have a lot of, I have a good amount of um, Pro Acryl, but not enough. I really don't have enough colors, uh, but I do, I would like to get, um, wow, where did I put those colors at? Oh, there they are. I reorganized my paint so everything's not exactly clear anymore. Um, but uh, I do need to get some standard acrylics. I, I love the contrast paints though. I think they do a great job and when you do the Zenithal highlighting, which I love, um, they come out pretty quick. Hey, David. Um, but yeah, I have too many paints, too many minis to paint. And I really shouldn't buy any more. Uh, I mean, come on. We're getting older, you know. I mean, who knows? Um, but I don't know, I love them. I do, I actually really love the chibi stuff. It's silly, I mean. The, the great thing is, is as far as if you're a beginner, um, this is a great way to go. Like I, I was saying the other day that you can get it for like $15, but it's 20 something now. Um, and uh, that's a, it's not still not bad when you consider what GW charges for, I mean, for $20, you can't even get much anymore. Um, and I love GW Minis. I mean, I will say, even though I think that I love these, um, um, these uh, chibis, the GW Minis are the best. Um, I also have uh, quite a bit of um, Kingdom Death, which I have not painted any of them, but they are really nice miniatures. Um, and I have not played it. Scott has played it. Um. Hey, Nova Ninja. Three, two, one. Thanks so much for the follow. 
I will not be painting cable. I, I see that I put that in, uh, if you see it. <laughs> Once again, I actually messed up last week because I could not change the um, YouTube thing. I did change it afterwards, but I couldn't, couldn't edit it for some reason. It was like having a problem with, um, with my browser or whatever. Hey mate to you too. Um, the, uh, the, the YouTube wouldn't work. It works. Uh, we actually changed it. So the other thing I had a real problem with last week was we use a, uh, some software called, um, uh, team viewer, which is allows you to, uh, remote desktop. You know, I, I'm, I'm used to using actual remote desktop at my old job. Uh, but, um, we switched to, um, we, sw we we've been using t team viewer and it's, a, it's not cheap. Um, and it was not working for me, like real problem. So I, I told Scott like, hey, I, it kicked me off twice. And you know, again, I'm not, um, I'm not paying uh, for mine because I'm just doing it for this, right? Derek uses it and Scott was using it. So I was just going with the, the free account, which is all I really need. But maybe because it's, I'm on our streams, you know, and it is, it's, this is a BGG stream. Um, they, oh, hey, is it 11 o'clock already? Uh, that is my re reminder, daily reminder to do something here. Anyway, um, so I, we switched to Google's uh, remote desktop. And I got to tell you, it, for me anyway, at least so far, we haven't used it for us. We, we're probably going to switch to it for everything. Um, but that was Scott, Scott and I on Friday figured it out. And it's been, it was amazing for me today. Like very, very simple. Which makes me happy because, uh, it's just, I don't, the, the, the difficulty of getting on it was so terrible. Um, and not reliable for me. So, cause you know, I kind of need to, for me to be able to launch the stream from this, uh, from the desktop here, um, I have to get on to the, the computer that's running the stream streams because we're on YouTube as well. It's Twitch and YouTube. And so um, this one doesn't look quite as good. Maybe I'm just imagining things. Well, the gray is a little bit grayer than more white. That could be how dark the miniature is. Anyway, that looks pretty cool. We'll go with that for now. So I will be done with that. I'm actually excited to be painting Punisher. Um, Hilariously, I think it's cable though. Big gun. Um, I did prime, so that was what I was doing over the weekend when I had time. I'm trying to, since we're going out of town, um, I need to uh, get episodes ready and things like that. And uh, so, I've, in between, I've been trying to do things. So last night I came in, primed. Then I looked at them and they were too dull. Now, they still don't match. They're close enough, but you can see, like, it's tough. Like, I can't, this is two layers of white trying to do, and it ends up kind of killing the Zenithal if you go too crazy. This one, as you can see, I kind of went too crazy. Um, so first thing I usually do is I paint the face and I'm probably gonna do that now. Uh, I don't know why. I think just because the face is important to me and I can, generally do a pretty good job of keeping away from it once I get started on it. So, let's see, will I use the wooden dowel today? I mean, I prefer these kind of holders, the uh, the ones from G uh, Games Workshop, and any of them, like the jaw ones are great. Uh, when I have to use the uh, the tack, it's okay, the, I, I'm using, I think this is the stuff that came with my um, my red grass ones. Uh, I have two red grass uh, handles, painting handles. Um, I don't, it's okay. I mean, they generally stick, but I like these clamps. The problem is with these miniatures is they um, tend to um, bend. I had one actually leap out of the, the uh, holder because it was like, it bent and I picked it up. I'm like, what happened? And I looked at it and the base was totally bent. And I actually had a problem with one of these uh, I think it's this, well, I don't know. They both look kind of the same now. It might've been this one. Uh, oops, I'm sorry, you can't see them. 
Uh, this one was actually bent from, you know, in the box. And so I, what I did to straighten it out is I put it in hot water and then de de uh, deformed it, you know, got the shape uh, with my fingers and then dunked it in. Uh, I didn't, you know, it was like I was being cautious because it's very hot. Um, but then I dunked it in ice and I held it with my uh, hand in the ice water. And then it basically locks back in position. Um, and it's pretty great. It worked out really quite well there. Um, so I need flesh. I do have more flesh colors now, but humans, or humanoids, um, I basically only have one. Uh, they can bend and can even cause tears. I've, uh... Oh, the handles? Yes, J Jason. Yeah, 100%. That's what it, it sucks. Um, I don't know. I don't mind the... Hey, Skippin, how you doing? Um, uh the Googles. Uh, I like some of the red grass stuff. I like their palette. I did, oh, I think that's, I need to peek now. I'm sorry, folks. I was, well, I'm sure they're going to let me change stuff in the, um, I did back the, the new one from the exemplar or whatever from, uh, oh, I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> I have backed uh, Hobby Holder and, you know, uh, Game Envy stuff. I have their lamp. I love it. Um, I might add another lamp to my Kickstarter. I mean, I keep, I've been so, well, we've had to do work on the house. And so I have done a little bit more um, uh, purchasing since that sort of done. And uh, I don't know, I feel like I should, uh, let's see if it pops up, it might be too late. Oh, 42 hours to go. I'll do it later. But I did have something I wanted to add, and maybe the lamp. Um, their wet pellets are good too. I really don't need any wet pellets lately, but I thought, oh, I'd try one. Because they're not terribly expensive. I think they're 20 something dollars for the basic one. Um, and I have a couple of red grass ones. I bought them over the years, uh, both on Kickstarter. And um, I think they're fine. Um, I use an old, I still have it somewhere here. It's underneath. Um, Masterson, I think is the name. Uh, wet palette that's just fine too and I have one above it that I used that was one of those old enamel trays with the blue edge that was what Nikki Nikki's the one that showed me the wet palette stuff um, yeah mass the wet sponge so much yeah the red grass sponge is not great I've had some problems uh, army painter wet palette's not bad either it does not see it well at least the one that Scott has does not seal like the red grass ones it looks very similar to that but if what I usually do is I put it in the fridge um, if you are in a uh, humid area you might I don't know how effective it is but you put copper and that's one of the things they've added to their campaigns these copper weights that I guess maybe put on top of the paper I don't know um, I, I don't really think I need them we don't really have that much problem with humidity but the, the red grass sponge has gotten some mold and it was very quick like kind of shocking um, now, I had not put it in the refrigerator, but I don't feel I have to all the time. Anyway, so flesh. Hey, hey, you're from Vietnam. Awesome. Nice to meet you, too. Nguyen. Not Nam Nguyen. Well, how you doing? I have a couple friends from when I was in high school with their last name was Nguyen. And a friend of mine that we used to take care of for her dog. Nikki loved her dog. Um, Last name Nguyen. It holds water too well and it never releases water. It's, yeah, you know what? Well, that's the thing about uh, what is this humidity you speak of? Yeah, I'm in the same situation. Um, Colorado is definitely not humid there. Uh, we, uh, that's the one thing about the exemplar. They have a vent, which I'm intrigued to try. So, uh, I, as a matter of fact, I, I'm not even using my red grass palette because I'm using contrast paints. I use it to hold the one of those Swedish uh, dishcloths um, right now, and that's the top. Uh, but I do like to use it when I am, I, I like a wet palette when I'm painting standard acrylics. I used to put standard acrylics on the, um, on the wet palette, and they're fine, but I feel that it's not quite as good as, um, um, boy, I am missing a tool here. It's gotta be in the house. Um, I really like the, this because it's you can control how much paint you put on it, number one. And since it's a, a 
I'm using uh, a little bit too much there because I'm just doing two faces with the flesh. I suppose I could grab some other ones and do it. I generally do that. Um, but I feel you can go pretty quickly with the contrast paints and get really nice results. I do have, um, who was mentioning it earlier? Uh, Ranadar. I do have uh, the Marvel, I mean Marvel, I'm Marvel on the brain. Uh, I do have um, Army Painter. I bought some of their speed paints and they're pretty nice. Um, I have a lot of, I bought quite, I bought like 20 something of the first range of speed paints. And then um, I, be, uh, and I, maybe more than, maybe closer to 30. Um, and then the, the speed paints came out and I, uh, the contrast paints originally, but uh, the speed paints came out and our friends were gonna bring me some because we don't have a store, we didn't have a store really very close to us that carried it. Um, I found a place a little further away that has it now. It's funny, I kind of like to buy my paints local. Uh, I, ha I did buy these, um, I did buy these uh, speed paints. I bought a big set of them, one of the big sets of them um, from Amazon. But again, it's we still don't really have that much places selling them nearby. Our very local, um, two very very local stores, one closer than the other, don't have it at all. Um, they don't have any Army Painter. Um, they're like Vallejo and GW or Citadel, um, and they're fine. I mean, you know, I like. All, all, the the new versions of the um, of the uh, Vallejo seem pretty cool. We I did try some of the uh, I didn't I haven't tried the game color I don't think I've tried the game color because if I tried them it was with my friend Sebastian he I think he went to Vallejo completely I mean you know he still has uh, Games Workshop stuff. Um, but I really like the, the GW um, contrast paints. I love them. I mean, I, so I was saying, they, I had 20, nearly 20, uh, 30 of them, and uh, some of the shades. And GW reached out and asked if I wanted some of, uh, one of some of their games. And I said, well, I do. I am painting stuff. Maybe I would can paint them um, to play them on the show. And um, they sent me, they asked if I would want the paints. I'm like, uh, absolutely. So they sent me all of the new paints. So I have the, the most recent set, which is now like nearly two years ago or something, a year and a half ago. Um, and then I have, uh, then they also sent me all the shades, the new shades, which was interesting because I can actually AB them. And I think they're fine. I've, the funny thing is, is I've been a user of, um, Army Painter shades for a long time. I think those were very good. Uh, I don't think I've used their like non oil equivalent, but I've used um, uh, their dark tone and their soft, strong tone and their, which I think is Agrax or a shade or something like that. And there's soft tone. I do not have any of the purple or any of those yet. Oh, of theirs. Um, and I don't know. That's one reason why I don't think, I, well, it's expensive too. The new paints from, um, well, there's a couple things that kind of make me not want to get the new. Wow. Hey everyone, thanks for the raid. How's Paula doing? Um, I'm painting, I, I say on the thing I'm painting Cable, but I'm actually painting Punisher. I was doing it, f remembering it, and just remembering the big gun, and then I, as soon as I walked in here today, I was like, oh, cred, I'm doing Punisher, which is fine. I just thought it was Cable. Uh, I programmed it all in on the thing, and then I come out here and look, I'm like, oh, it's, ca it's Punisher. Um, hope you guys are doing well. What did Paula do? Um, Hey Andrea, good evening to you too. Demhead raid. <laughs> okay, I ju I like GW. Just rebottled them. Vallejo scale seventy five moved on from most of Reaper. I've never used much Reaper. I have some, um, and I have some friends that think they're wonderful. 
Um, I honestly feel you get, you know, part of it is just knowing how to use the paints. Um, <laughs> Hornist went 34, dem heads. Well, I know that Nick was not involved. I wish he was. He, Nick and Mike are moving to back to. <laughs> hey, Scott, thanks for that and the support. Um, so, um, Mike and Nick are moving back up to Sacramento, which is a bummer. Um, but it's going to be better for Mike and his wife because they can have some family support to take care of the, the baby. She's coming up on two years old, I think. She's way cute last time we saw her. Um, but yeah, I think that, uh, I think all the paints are fine. It just depends on what you do. I, I've never used any Scale 75. I just don't see them. And I have not backed any of the campaigns. And I also know that Duncan Rhodes stuff is pretty good. But his are $5 a bottle. So, you know, they go, I mean, I don't know. That's probably about the same as GW. I'm pretty certain I paid more than $5 for these two bottles. It cost me more than $10 for these two. Now, I bought them at a store near us that doesn't, they charge a little bit more for their stuff. And that's fine. They're a small store trying to survive. And I want them to survive. I actually generally will go into a store and buy something. And I went in recently from the, to them and bought a... Uh, a contrast paint I thought that I didn't have and as soon as I got it home I'm like oh I have it um, so I have a lot of what is it Voluspa pink Volupus Volupus pink got a lot of it anyway these guys are these guys are cool here hey McMouse 2k they're fine you just moved on yeah I don't, the th we don't have those either. Like we don't have the hobby stores that we used to have. And, and again, I kind of prefer to buy them locally, but you might get fresher paints if you buy them. It depends. We went to the uh, GW store, the only one that's left in the area, you know, kind of sort of immediate area and it's a half an hour away um, or 20 some minutes away. Uh, and I ended up, I was trying to get um, Lamy and Medium I think, is that right? Yeah, Lamy and Medium. And uh, I got the new the, the new version of the paint handle, the one I'm using right here. I was saying to the, he, when we came in, it was busy. There was, you know, that was a, that store was great. They were all playing games, lots of young folks playing. And I said, well, I'm here to pick up. He's like, how can I help you? I'm like, he was busy too, and he ran over to help us. And I go, well, I'm here to get some Lamy and Medium. And I think I want to get another one of the paint handles. I just wanted to, I had tried the new paint handle in, um, in Germany twice, a friend of Sebastian's. And so I guess a friend of ours, um, Kai was like, he's like, you can borrow it. I have several, don't worry about it. And um, I uh, I like it. I mean, it's, I like the old ones. The old ones are good for my hand. I guess I should show. So this is the old style ones. I have a good amount of these. And this is the only one of these that I have, but I like it. And I think it might be nice for Nikki's hands too. Um, it's a little easier to manipulate, and I think that it's actually cool. I thought, I was couldn't quite figure out what they were doing, but I, I realized that, you know, my hand's medium-sized hand, um, and uh, it grips it pretty good. This one actually does just fine. You know, the, 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 the bell of this makes it so it's more easy to handle. Um, and I think that it's, I think the ability to twist it so quickly is nice. The red grass ones, Skippin was saying that they're overrated. Um, and it probably is. You, there's a little spinny thing you can, this is the original. <coughs> the new ones are blue and these can pop off. I don't think these come off. Um, you can spin it here and I, I never found it was comfortable. Uh, and you know, it's fine. It's a good handle too, cause it's got a good shape. I mean, I've got so many paint handles. I have the game MV, MV ones. I have uh, some uh, uh, R German. Uh, Russian, I mean German. It's a, a German uh, Rackham or something like that. Um, that doesn't sound right. Um, and those are nice too. They're wooden and very, very nicely done. And I, I like those too. It depends. It just depends on what I'm painting. Some, both of those, the the um, Game Envy and the Rackham or whatever. I wonder if I can see it on here. 
Just don't keep speaking out. Wrathcore. They have the they have the bow here. This has got this little skull that just doesn't seem to want to stand here. That's to protect it so you don't poke yourself. Um, but it's a resin thingy. It's not great. Uh, I probably should put some poster tack. Um, this is a split piece of cork. Now, it's none of these minis are going to fit. Well, maybe. No. Uh, there are larger pieces of cork, but you put your mini in there and then you shove it in. And to get it out, this one lets you shove it from the bottom, but some of the taller, I have taller, more tapered handles. They have like a uh, drill hole that you push up and push the cork out. And then there's ones that, they have some, some slightly different ones, like flat that don't hold the mini. Um, but they have these bows that allow you to hold the miniature more tightly and, you know, be more stable. And that's how you can steady your hands. You know, you just put your hands together and you buckle them and paint. And it really does work. It's really helpful. Uh, here's sort of like the equivalent. Uh, I always show this one because it's close. Uh, this is a large bow on it, but this is one of the, these are uh, STLs that they, that um, Kit gave on the first Kickstarter. Uh, so you could print the other components because they were selling this and this and this. This is my yellow submarine one here. Um, but the neat thing is this, this pops out. They use standard bottle tops so you can use your soda bottles. Uh, I think I got a bunch of them with it. This one actually spins very easily so you don't, you know. And this is a pretty big bow. I don't know if it's, it's the shorter one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Wow. Good difference there. Um, yeah, they're hobby holders, what these are called, but it's all game envy now. And I like their stuff. Their their lamp, the new lamp I got is pretty nice. Um, I've had it for a little while. Hey, let's see here. I actually had so when uh, Jason was talking about the ben, the bends of the these clamp ones, um, I actually had one. Um, It was, it wasn't t entirely that, but it bounced off of the handle and on the floor. And I broke one of these uh, Marvel United minis. It was the uh, Iron Man one, this one here. And I, you can see it's a little messy at the base here. Well, I had to pin it and super glue it to get it in there. And it's pretty solid, but it's not perfect because I only did one of the points is pinned, not the other ones. So, these kind of, you know, because they're made from several pieces, but they're already glued together when you get them, which is cool, but it's a little frustrating for me because I really don't think they should break that easily. But um, I do wish I had time to uh, paint more often. It is the one thing I, I so having the setup in the house. I have that little tray that I from Hobby Zone that I got before the pandemic. But boy, when I tried to buy one, I tried to buy one for Nick. Actually, I think I just gave Nick Nick, uh, Nick Murphy Nikki's tr uh, tr paint tray, and um, I was trying to replace the one. Even though Nikki, she can just use this one, but. Uh, I, I mean, I want Nikki to paint more than Nikki wants to paint. She already has a ton of hobbies, as she says to me all the time. Uh, I showed her some other artistic creation thing, and she's like, oh my gosh, and then she goes, as if I don't have enough stuff to do. So, um, but she painted stuff. She was into the Vampire Counts and the Tomb Kings and the Dark Elder, the, though I painted all the Dark Eldar for her, now called the Dukari. Um, she benefited from the fact that nobody wanted the Dark Elder miniatures from the third edition in our, of our friends. And so she had a full on army from that. Okay, face done, S sort of done. His is much darker. He's Deadpool, I mean, not Deadpool. He's the Punisher. Does not look like John Bernthal, though. I was painting, uh, painting. I was editing an episode with Deborah, 
and Dave. And uh, it'll be coming out soon. But we haven't seen Deborah for a little while. She has been filming in New York. She's going to be back supposedly soon. And we'll have her on the show again. And then I uh, haven't seen Rusty either. The last time we hung out with Deborah was the last time we hung out with Rusty. He's having some problems with work. Um, is that right? Did we see him? Yeah, because we'd seen him at PGG Con in November and then a couple weeks later at um, when we filmed. And uh, I mean, I, I miss Rusty. I'd like to see him. He, his work is just crazy right now. Dark brown hair. Let's see here. I have two holders. I might as well just put them on both of them. It is the benefit of having multiple holders. Then you don't, because you really shouldn't touch your miniatures. I have kind of dry hands with not a lot of oils. So it's not too bad for me, but I've had times where I've messed up something, you know, because I tend to hold them like this. And, you know, I've touched wet, recently painted hair on a figure. Um, I've kind of worn it a little thin. Contrast paints are not durable. Uh, it is the one thing that you have to really take into account. You must varnish them. Um, and you should varnish your miniatures. If you play with them, you are going to have troubles uh, if you don't varnish them because they just get worn out. There's a great video... Uh, from Goober Town Hobbies where he was playing. He wasn't playing, he was moving miniatures uh, in a cycle and eating Funyuns now. So, you know, he's he's really stacking the deck um, if you want to mess them up. But they did get messed up. You know, certain, uh, I can't remember, he might have even had non-varnished minis. Um, and you definitely want to, if you've spent any time painting them, you don't want to, you don't want to not varnish them. Uh, I like, a lot of people like it. I've been using it for a few years as well. The AK Interactive. Um, MK, uh, what is it called? Never can remember the name of the other ones. MIG. I would rather buy their miniature stuff. Uh, Ammo MIG. Ammo by MIG. Um, same, another company from the same group of uh, folks. And uh, I like their stuff mostly more, but it's even harder to find their stuff. Uh, I bought b all of that stuff locally, as again, I would prefer. There is a great hobby store in Burbank, but it's, you know, it's real hobbies. It's not miniature stuff. We were there one day when a, a mother and her kids were there. And, you know, the kid wanted uh, contrast paints. And um, the mom, you know, was help, you know, trying to get it together to figure it out. And she... Um, didn't, they didn't see what they wanted, so they went to, um, they went to Geeky Tees next, and we were at, we were at Geeky Tees next too, and the kid was going crazy, and the mom was, you know, saying, "Well, these are kind of expensive. I don't want to buy all of them if you're not going to keep doing this." Um, and I wanted to tell her to just go, you know, get one of the small sets of the uh, Army Painter. They had the 2.0 speed paints. Um, but let her figure that out because too crazy kids are they were going it was a boy, a boy and a girl and the, the girl was trying to support her brother it was pretty funny and he was very adamant that that's what he wanted they're great I mean I think I think all of the paints modern paints are pretty darn good I've only used a little bit of the um, express colors from Viejo uh, and I liked them, but I don't. The new batch, so I I tried one called Spaceship Gray or Starship Gray or something, and I thought it was one of the regular ones. And then I I was doing it to using it to paint these. Where is it? Right here. Ah, I just dropped Electra. I don't know that she's finished yet. Mm. Um, I'm painting these Hearthkin Leagues of Votan. They're very small. Because they're dwarves, um, space dwarves. 
I was using this paint here and I like it. And I, so I thought, oh, let me try to buy some. And it was nowhere. Uh, Sebastian had bought it in um, at Essen. And so he basically got some of the new colors. So there's a whole bunch of new colors that are bright. And I would like to try those out. Um, but again, not real local stuff. Now, Vallejos, they might have them now. I have not looked at... Um, we haven't been to... Uh, Gosh, when did we have Eric and um, Eric Lang and uh, Matt Paquette? Well, we went someplace with them. I can't remember if that's what, I think we ended up playing the one game we played together, which was fun, but I, I would have loved to have had to do more. Um, and, uh, but we went to the store in a nice one in Pasadena. Uh, that's mostly about hobbies, uh, not a ton. Of, they had some games. That was really why we were there, because we were with gamers, not miniature painters. And um, they had the biggest mix of paints, uh, hobby paints, I have seen in our area. But it still wasn't great. But they did have Army Painter, but I, I don't know why I didn't buy some. I actually, I think I bought something else. Again, I wasn't really needing anything. <laughs> I think I was probably in a phase of let's not buy any paints unless you, you got to have it. Um, but I did buy a couple items from them because I was in the store. I always try to buy something from these stores and uh, want them to stay around. But they had, they had AK Interactive. They had Army Painter, Speed Paints. They had Citadel. They had a good chunk of stuff. I gonna move these things. I also have some of these do not have varnish on them. I need to varnish soon. My problem is, is I definitely don't need to buy, I mean, I suppose I have time to cancel the uh, the Kickstarter uh, pledge for uh, the exemplar, but I do want to try it. Um, but uh, I do like to keep them in the fridge, the palettes when they're we got paint on. They tend to. Here's the funny thing. Do I really care? I mean, I'm mixing the paints. I don't know. That's what's really great about this little wet, this little poppet fid, uh, fidget thingy. Mostly, I mean, if you're mixing something that's crazy that you you want to save, then I suppose it's worth it. Um, I don't know. It's a weird situation. I, I'm not certain what the answer is. Um, But I, you know, it's, it's, I, I do, here's the thing. I need a wet palette for when I'm working. I don't really care about saving the paints, um, you know, for the next day because, um, here in Southern California, the paint just dries fast. That is really the issue. It just dries so darn quickly that you can't, um, you can't, oh, I don't want the wildwood. That's too dark. Um, probably Gore Grunta. What is the brown? See, that's the problem with the, uh, all of the, I was starting to mention it on the army painter, is I don't love, I love the triad system on the um, paints. Uh, they started that with the um, air paints that they had. And the new ones have six colors, so you can do four triads, which is awesome. Um, but I don't, they don't seem to have enough of certain colors. Like, definitely not a lot of brown. I mean, GW is exactly the same, though. There's, like, so much blue and green in, if you look at the spectrum. Now there's at least more reds and, and uh, yellows and purples in the uh, GW color, uh, uh, contrast paints. Um, but I just, I want a good range of color. And that's why I don't know. So I won't buy... If you get that new set um, from uh, Army Painter, it's, I think it lists for $750 for the complete set. 
And I already know that I do not want the metallics. Um, I already have the metallics from the speed paint set and they're pretty much better uh, according to others, but in my usage, they are pretty great. Um, they don't have a bright enough silver. In that case, you need my, so I have all, I have a lot of metallics. I have the Proacryl metallics. I have uh, the speed paint metallic, uh, speed paint metallics. Um, and I have, uh, I have, I think all the colors, if, if not most of them, most of them, if not all of them, um, of the Proacryl metallics. But I don't have great silvers, like bright, bright silvers. That one's probably okay. Let me look at it, because I actually didn't think about it when I was doing stuff. Um, I end up using metallic medium as the brightest. This is pretty silvery. I should look at it. But the the ones from the speed paints are, it's too dark, and I want like mithril, you know. The so I end up using metallic medium. I have this in. Uh, the uh, Vallejo, and I also have the Proacryl um, metallic medium, and it's basically kind of like a white pearlescent, but it's pretty great. Um, looking at what I have here from the Proacryl, not what I need. Um, so I mostly, I only have a couple bottles of the uh, Vallejo. Where is it? Um, that could be in the house for sure. Um, of the silver that I have. I have a few different paints. There's not a lot of golds, unfortunately, but the, their airbrush metallics. Goodness gracious, where is that bottle that I was using? Where's another one? So I started this and got it sort of reorganized, but it's not 100% done. Um, I do like the airbrush metallics because they're thinner. Like I re remember the uh, paints being went from, um, Games Workshop back in 20 some years ago. I loved those metallics and they don't, they change them. They're too thick. I do love Retributor uh, armor. That's the gold. Uh, I have a bottle of that somewhere. Boy, really, it's kind of a mess here still. Uh, I had it wiped out here, but then I, br I brought so much stuff into the house that I um, kind of messed it all up and I didn't put it all back 100% yet. Um, but yeah, I paint, I was painting in the house so I could hang out with my mom. Uh, she doesn't like coming out here. There's not that much for her to do and it's not that comfortable for her to sit out in the studio. Um, she will when we're filming and maybe she will this weekend because that is our last day in town. Wow. Where is that paint at? Anyway, the, 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 the ones that are really good, uh, do I have any examples of my completed minis? Well, I have, I can show you some here. I don't, I shouldn't. I should put take pictures of them, um, Jason. So let's see here. I could show you. Well, I have um, I have this one. This is pretty done. This is the uh, Ant Man. I actually should take pictures so I can use them for the thumbnails on YouTube because uh, the automatic thumbnails are not great. Um, but yeah, this is a, a great. I really like this one. This one turned out great. Captain America is pretty uh, pretty much done. I think I need to do a little bit more in his face to um, bring out some of the shading on his face. Cause he looks, I did extra work to make him look a little bit less like he had five o'clock shadow, like the previous one. Um, I showed some a little bit, a little while ago. I have silk. And she turned out great. And I have, uh, I can show you like, my old school style paint. I can still paint like that. Yeah, and that quarter, great on that one. This is one of my uh, uh, Space Hulk minis. I um, I actually painted all of these, uh, and then I gave the set to Scott so that would be part of the BG library. So I I don't remember. I should take go back. I'm sure they're still in the library in the archive part of the library now. Um, take pictures of them and then compare. Now I only have like three of these done of all. Of, I, I never got, I got so busy. Basically game night started about that time, a little bit after that. And I just never got back to painting this stuff. I did paint some of the um, other ones from this set, uh, but they don't look exactly the same. That's one thing I, I mean, I kind of like some unity, but I also feel like, well, you know, 
they're not all made at the same time necessarily and you know with the lore of all that stuff anyway let me get back to painting some brown hair um, but I have a lot of I have a lot of stuff I, I mostly I mean here's some also these are great these are the uh, part of the Warhammer under uh, Warhammer underworlds um, and I uh, I really like doing these and this is that retributor of course it's got um, strong tone over it right so then I have to come back and pop, uh, pop out the, the gold a little bit with that but I really like this one this is great um, this one here with the uh, thanks Jason um, so yeah, I like the the bow on this one and everything. It turned out pretty neat. And you know, these are these are meant to be quick. Now I did. I was talking about the other day the freehanding. I freehanded these uh, these lines, you know, for the capes. And and you know, they're not that uh, hard to do. They're, it's a little bit of a challenge. You need to get you know practice steadying your hand. Here's another mini from it that was the um, the bird here that turned out pretty cool. Um, I was doing, uh, where is she at here? Here she is. I was doing wasps and I freehanded the eyes on her visor. Now this is the, this is the, what they were doing on the, um, miniature from Big Child. So I was duplicating it, but I love it. Turned out great. It's not that hard. Um, and, uh, I love the, this is the, iron, uh, the Iron Man that I was, this is, I have another one that I think I slightly prefer to this one. This one was where I was trying to, I don't, as I, as I said, I don't really have a bright um, silver color to do Zenith. I was trying to do a Zenithal metallic. I, I did it with dry brushing. I dry brushed another one. I've done three Iron Mans. Because um, I was actually trying to do the, you know, I, the, my method is airbrushing. I airbrush everything. But I was doing them with dry brushing to show the different techniques. She has more work to do on her face. But this is all dry brushed. And, um, and it looks great to do the Zenithal or the, or the Slap Chop. This is more Zenithal than Slap Chop, but it's essentially kind of similar or the same. But th this is just as effective, I feel. I just, the reason why her face is painted is that the dry brushing, it looked bad. It was too dark for me. Um, I do not think you should worry about it, but I'm just that kind of a crazy person. Um, but I like the way the metal looks here on this. It's pretty cool, but the dry brush one was a little more exciting. This was the very first one I did. See how far forward he's leaning compared to the other one? Um, but uh, I think that they're, you know, I have a couple, at least three or 400 painted minis, uh, if not more, because I've been painting for a long time. I just didn't paint so much from probably 2012 to 2019. Hey, Opal, how you doing? I am a, a nerd. Uh, Gore is fairly dark. Oh, you're painting space dwarves. I love them. I would, I would love to do them more of them. I, I don't have enough. I was gonna, I was talking about the other day. I'm frustrated with the cost in the United States. Um, I was going to buy some of the Votan stuff in um, Germany, and I just didn't want to bring it back, uh, deal with it. But it was $80 for the vehicle, or 80 euros for the vehicle. And at least at that time, the euro and the dollar were pretty close. And in the United States, it was 108 um, or 110. And I just was frustrated, you know, like this is too much. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, it's, is it, I don't know, that's the thing. I can get 10 of these Marvel United minis for $20 and you know, they're different. They're, you're playing something different with them, but if you're just painting and getting started, it's not a bad price, you know? Um, so first things first, I think I'm going to paint a little bit of a highlight on his hair. Um, this paint is really not great. I think I've thinned it a bunch too, and it just keeps, that's the one thing I don't like about these. GWs a, a, a lot is the the um, the jars the the pots they're just they're not great it may not be wide enough actually but 
I could also just do it after I painted it uh, brown. Um, so what I tend to do, let me show you a female one that I've done recently. So here's a, what I did, on, this is not recent actually, but it's, it's uh, a good one. I went and painted some highlights on the top before I put the contrast paint on to give her some, you know, in color highlights without having, cause you know, these paints are transparent, but I, <coughs> <coughs> I painted some streaks on her hair beforehand and then just put the color over it. and they turn out pretty great and it's not too hard to do. And it's a little easier, well, a lot easier than painting them after the fact. Do I have another one over here? I don't have another one over here. I think that, that I think this is a recent one I did actually now I think about it. Um, but yeah, it's cool. And you know, I'm trying really hard to like focus on getting their faces smoother. But again, this is, if you look at the two of these, kind of happier with this one, still a little too dark. Oops, you can't see. Um, and that's where I probably need to, my next thing where I need to focus on getting better. <coughs> these are larger faces. I can paint them instead of just using the contrast paints, which is, you know, what I'm trying to do is show the easiest, quickest way to get some results. And I'm just being ridiculously over, uh, overdoing it on it. You don't have to worry about it too much. I do like to uh, have the contrast paints thinned out a little bit with contrast medium because I like to, when I'm doing Zenithal, I like to kind of creep up on the level of intensity I want for the color. And so doing that, um, let me just try painting this gray here real quick, see if it'll work. Um, it might be too soon. And it might be too light. It probably is. It needs to be done after I do the paint. So after a coat or two. So I did do some of that on, um, on this miniature, even though it's not hair. I kept adding stuff and building it up on these two to try to get it to the intensity that I wanted. And it's, these are still not 100% done, but they're close. Uh, you can't see that gray, so I will save it till after I paint a coat or two of brown. So yeah, this is, this is lighter than I'm gonna want it to be. And I still feel you get some of the Zenithal. It's not just a, uh, a glaze or a overcoat. Um, but I feel if you go too dark, well, I'll tell you. So when I first got into the contrast paints, I was frustrated they didn't have a flesh. Like, man, they really need a flesh color that's a good one. And then I realized that Gilman flesh was great. You just need to use the contrast medium on it. And then you have a, an amazing range of skin tones um, from that one paint. I, I, I have uh, Akoya and um, Shuri and a couple others that were just phenomenal. And that was basically, probably Nick Fury, um, that was basically using the paint uh, almost out of the bottle. I changed it up. I didn't have everybody uh, be this exact same skin tone for that, but I used it same on this flesh here. This is the same flesh tone that I used on, let me see, I think, oh no, I don't have them here. They're on the tray, which I moved away right now. Um, they're great, really great. And you know, that's this, this, uh, the medium helps you. You can, you can thin these, I'm sure with water, but uh, your end result is not going to be that great. If you use the medium, like in any case of paint, when you're painting with paints, the medium will keep the paint body about the same. It will ch and it changes, uh, well, water doesn't necessarily change it either, uh, the color. It does, it changes the intensity. Um, but, uh, Using the contrast medium is really the way to go. So you do have to kind of work with it and you shouldn't go, you gotta, ugh, I just put a big splotch on my fingertip. 
Um, you do need to work on it to try not to have a lot of pools, particularly when you are, I mean, especially when you're using it uh, as a straight paint over like the white, if you're doing like a contra a standard contrast paint over a white or a light gray. Um, boy, his head is very close to that gun. Um, but, uh, Yeah, you don't want the pooling. The pooling ends up making it, um, ugh. Take some of that off of his temple there. So if you, ha if you go back with your brush slightly damp, you can usually pull the paint off if you've gone a little bit too much on there. Or you've made a mistake. But also, you, when you're working to try to make sure it doesn't get too much, the pools of this, the color, which is detrimental, while it's still wet, you keep working it and wicking up the excess pooling of the paint. Okay. You also really have to work hard on these miniatures it, to clean the mold lines. They're not as easy, in my opinion, uh, as it is to clean them on GW miniatures. Now, there's still plenty to do. The good thing for me about the GW stuff, more time to assemble, not so great. But the good thing is, is I am assembling and I am seeing where things are, you have problems, you know, where it's, it's happening on the hair here. I did a better job on this one, smoothing it out on the hair. Um, the, um, you really have to work to clean them. And you, you know, it's, it, it isn't necessary, but it is noticeable in my opinion. And I try to like, take care of it and I work hard to clean them before I uh, prime them but it's a challenge what is your opinion on painting board game minis like for instance maze and scythe I've been painting been all for painting everything but for board game lately but for board games lately as I prefer them in saw cups huh you know it's up to you here's the thing this is a these are board game miniatures this is um attack Mac is asking um, it's really up to you. These games, when you play them, particularly this one here I'm talking about, the, the good guys are blue, the bad guys are red, and the uh, anti-heroes or whatever are, um, are purple. So they can be both bad or good, right? Um, you tend to lose, in my opinion, what's what? when you paint the minis, right? Because you can't see that stuff anymore. Now, the reality is most people are focusing on their character, so they know where their character's at, but it's not as clear, so maybe, but it really depends on what you wanna do. I have seen those side minis painted, and man, they are gorgeous. Um, I, it's just if you're interested, I would try one and see, but I understand 100% why you are not into it. Um, I watched, I, I'm not watched, um, I saw a post and I commented on it on, U, on BGG um, about somebody with a quicker method of like just getting stuff painted. And wow, I keep getting it on his forehead. Um, and it was pretty great. He was just basically doing kind of a Zenithal thing, but not... Um, but not to the extent of this. And he would do a dusting of color and then, you know, it was great. There was other examples and I was explaining, you know, my method that I've been doing. Uh, 
but to me, those could be potentially more, uh, if you decide to go that kind of route, uh, it could be more of um, where you keep sort of the color of the, the miniature, if that matters, because I don't, here's the deal, I don't love it when they're all the same color. Um, but a lot of board games have them in colors, you know? And, uh, boy, what did I do here? I, I, I've become to, to the point where I think I, I would not always paint them, but often paint them. Um, I have, I started painting a few of the uh, Imperial Assault. I did Han and Chewie, I think on May the 4th last year. Um, and, you know, they look cool. They're not done. I, I don't, they're not here. I might have put them back in the box. I don't know. Um, are they here? I don't think so. They're small, right? They're, they're kind of 40 K kind of scale miniatures. Um, but they're not that small. I mean, there's much smaller miniatures, miniatures out there, but, uh, but I will tell you, it tends to get your skills a little better. But if I do paint them all, I'll keep them in colored themes at least. That makes sense. Attack Mac, you are 100%. It's t it's, it, is, it is absolutely a possibility like that it could become too cluttered. It just depends on how many, mini how many miniatures are on the board. I, um, you know, when we play this game, it's just going to be the number of people, heroes, with the one villain. And then maybe some of the other scenarios have more villains, potentially. And, it, you know, it can become visually uh, cluttered. Um, it just really depends. Again, you do what you want to do and enjoy it. Um, don't feel the pressure unless others would like you to, see, you know, in your group would like to see them painted, then maybe, you know, give it a shot on something that's not too much involvement and then um, see how it feels and how it, if anybody's happy or, you know, or if you're just wanting to do it, give it a shot and just make it a single game that's not too much. Well, obviously if you do side, that's the, you know, a lot of the minis of the characters. Hey, thanks for the, I live, I lived in New York too. Thanks for the follow. Ugh, my ear. <laughs> they have no say in it. Yeah, I understand. I, I like to, I like it to be what people are interested in, you know? Uh, I, I, I like to make, I don't know. I'm the host. And I like to make people enjoy what they're doing. And most people are very excited to see the miniatures painted. Um, but I can see how that could be a problem. I don't paint that much. I mean, I'm painting, but ultimately I don't paint that much stuff. I mean, I absolutely paint the Games Workshop. You know, the funny thing about the Games Workshop stuff with the um, uh, Warhammer Underworlds, those are all in colors. Uh, they have, you know, kind of probably might be a good thing. Now, the good thing about miniatures from that the, that stuff is they're different each faction is quite a bit different um, although there are many uh, many of the um, what the heck are they called um, basically the humans um, so if you were into that series you would you could have a, some looking similar. That's one reason why I have painted enough of the, uh, wow, I'm not remembering the name. Uh, Stormcast Eternals, wow, no wonder I can't remember that name. It's a weird one. Uh, but yeah, the Stormcast Eternals, there's a, there's, they've done those quite a few times. I actually have two sets well, I have two sets of some of these minis because I, they were giving out miniatures uh, at events and they also had a separate 
Stormcast Eternal set that was sort of repeated in like one of the box games. And that's the Tennessee. So like the um, the Night Haunt, uh, which I love those. Um, those have been a couple of times. I did not. That was one of the things I messed up. I think in uh, Beast Grave they had a vampires one that I really loved, and I didn't get them. But Sebastian uh, found a set. I don't know. If, I think he bought the main box. So one of the games had those miniatures again in another box. So I asked him to pick that up for me so I can get it next. We go back to Germany next. Um, so his eyebrows, wow, his skin, I am really overdoing it here on there. Like I keep hitting it. Uh, now my hair is getting caught in the hair. Oof. Really kind of messed up his forehead. Too much sun is what I will say. But yeah, I, I mean, you're painting a lot, so, um, Attack Mac, you're painting a lot, so you don't necessarily need these to paint them. Right, some people don't have any experience painting minis, and so ones in board games are a good choice. Um, his hair is not dark enough. It's kind of a red hair now. So we shall see. I may be building it up a lot. So maybe I should have used um, Wildwood? Because he has some dark auburn hair there, or dark brown. Um, let's see. And I maybe just will do a wash or something like that to bring it, bring it, dark, darken it down. Oh my gosh, Shuri has the coolest hair. Her hair is braided, and the paint I used the wildwood on that, and it looks so good. It was literally one coat. Um, I might have touched some stuff up, but it was great. These sculpts can be pretty, pretty uh, interesting. So let's see. He's got a lot of dark clothes, and basically the skull. So see, basically, he's basically wearing all black. So I tend to use, uh, I tend to use basiliconum gray for the leather, which is which is a gray, is not black, and then I probably would use a darker gray on his shirt because I imagine it is not. It's not going to have any sheen, right? Or very little sheen. But I usually paint inside out. So let's paint his shirt next. What is going on with that gun? It is like a big silver gun. I'm looking at the reference photo. Hmm. Okay, well, let's try some black. GW has two fantastic blacks. <laughs> fantastic black. That was a friend of mine's band. I um, wonder if Grim Black is pretty good. Let's try this one here. I haven't used Black Legion that much. I will probably tone it down a tiny bit because I do not want... Um, I just don't want it to be too dark. <laughs> a lot of unpainted GW stuff. That is my problem. I probably have, oh my gosh, it's so much stuff. It's got like a Necromunda set, kill, two Kill Team sets, two of the Age of Sigmar set from a few years back, a bunch of the Warhammer Quest stuff. I don't know, too many. I mean, the Battlefleet Gothic. I wonder if they're coming back with that. I would like that. That's one game I haven't played in forever and I loved it. What is this? Just water? Oh, no, that's the gray. This is the gray that you put in there earlier. I thought that was water. <clears throat> okay. Let's move these out of the way. I don't want to mess them up. 
I really am happy. They added three more yellows when they did the redo of this, uh, the, the additional colors on Citadel. And I really love the yellows. I've not used the um, speed paint ones. A lot of their colors are just dark. I mean, so far, I don't have all of the colors, so I couldn't tell you. Um, I ended up using a lot. When I was using the GW paints initially, I used transparent yellow from um, from Proacryl to get the... Uh, well, this is dry, so I'll put some more brown on. Uh, to get the brighter yellows. It was kind of frustrating. But that was just the way they did it. So that was another example. I had the... Um, it's called the Iron in Yellow. Uh, and I felt it was too orange. But if you use the contrast paint on it, or the medium, it got pretty yellow and it looked great. It just wasn't bright enough for me. Now, part of the reason they probably did that is yellow's tough to paint. Um, if you paint these paint, uh, speed paint, uh, contrast paints, excuse me, uh, in the method that you're supposed to, uh, well, you know, the GW method that they prefer, which doesn't mean you have to do anything the way they want you to do it. Um, you're painting it over a bright undercoat, so it's going to, yellow is going to be pretty bright, red is going to be pretty bright. Uh, my problem with doing it that way tends to be that I definitely have a lot more coffee staining. Maybe not now, since I've been now painting with contrast paints forever. So when I read about these when they were coming, I got excited because I completely understood what they were doing. I didn't have any clue how great they ultimately would be. Um, because, you know, they're not just... Basically, I, I, there's a great video out there on the painting phase where they're talking to one of the main product developers who used to be at GW. And he is one of the two people that worked on the contrast paints. They felt that there was a huge gap between, you know, buying the stuff and then, you know, getting to painting them. And they wanted it to be easier for people. And so they came started developing the speed paint idea and or contrast paint excuse me i keep trying to give give it the wrong way there um and it uh i guess it supposedly saved gw um i don't know if that's true but uh it really i'm i'm certain it helped turn things around because contrast paint was a huge huge and great idea there have been other paints already kind of treading that water. I used golden paints, um, but I didn't use them in that sense. They're, they're, uh, their paints are relatively thin. Gosh, I have a couple bottles of them. Here's one right here. Um, the golden uh, artist colors, they're the, what do they call it? High flow acrylics, but you can't see that. Um, and this is kind of that thing. But Golden is more of an artist's paint, and they have very... Their pigment situation is a little better than the craziness that goes on with uh, hobby paints. And... Um, but when the, co the contrast paints were described, when they were announcing them, because I think I ended up buying them... I didn't get them right away. I got them pretty right away. I was in Dallas after Gen Con, and I... Or around Gen Con... And I wanted Scott to get into painting, so I bought some of the stuff and showed him how to do it. I painted some mini. I mean, it was like in our last two days or day in Dallas, and I quickly painted some minis with it because you know I got what they were doing. It was totally fantastic. Now he was not interested. <laughs> Ultimately, uh, he just knew he wasn't going to paint it. But during the pandemic, he and I started painting the Marvel United minis together on stream, and that was great. That's where I started doing the streaming painting. And uh, I really, I like them. I think it's, I think they're all pretty great. And I, th they have a bunch of great colors. I still don't have all the first series, which I still want to, I, I now basically just want to get them. I, I just don't know which ones I don't have. Because I was, I was paying attention to what people said about certain colors. Now, I also feel this is the beginning of it. I have not, like, I need to see, like, an updated video where they talk about how to use them now that there's a little bit more knowledge about how they all work. Um, but Adam Smasher, Tabletop Minions, was the one that 
really made the case for Xenothal. I've used Xenothal before to do as a, to map your shading. So when you're painting, you see, okay, this is darker here and stuff like that. But he was doing it directly over Xenothal and I'm, I'm like, oh my gosh, that is the way to do it. Because you get really great results pretty darn quickly. And you know, you don't have to spend a ton of time on them. You don't, it doesn't need to be that much effort to get them to look pretty good. Okay, so the hair is getting darker. It's, it's a lot darker in that. It's a brown, not a red. Um, okay, so let's do some black. I'm gonna try this Black Legion as the t-shirt or whatever the shirt is, bodysuit. This is a very good black too. They're both really good. Huh, the music cut off. Oh, there we go. Just the end of the track. So I'm going to put a tiny, tiny amount of contrast medium in here. Actually, that's probably not black. Off topic, but I've always wondered how did Game Night first get Deborah on the show? Hey, D. Um, well, if you watch our 500th episode, uh, you can see a uh, Deborah explain it herself. But I can give you a quick um, thing. We. So Kevin on our show, who's not been on our show for a while now because he moved to Texas, back to Texas, um, he was working for Geek and & Sundry. And he helped at, um, you know, because Deborah was doing a show on Geek and & Sundry called Relics and Rarities. And uh, he helped at WonderCon, which just happened recently here in L.A. Uh, again, it's a, month, a yearly one. Um, and... Uh, he was helping Deborah and her husband around uh, at the show. And uh, her husband is impaired vision. And um, so they're going up in an elevator, and Deborah is looking at Kevin and wondering where she knows him from. And the deal was she started watching our shows. So WonderCon was like April, end of April. And. Um, The show she watched was, or no, end of March, I'm sorry. Um, and the show she watched was, wasn't her first one either. Uh, it was her first one. The first one she watched was, uh, and so Kevin wasn't even on that episode. Um, it was Dave and I think, and Rusty and Nikki Knight. Um, gosh, what's the game? Victorian Masterminds. So. It was like recommended to her on YouTube and she watched it and she had fun watching us. We were all, you know, our goofy selves. And then uh, she watched more. So she watched, I know she watched uh, th this episode of Kevin, which was uh, Chronicles of Crime. And so she recognized him from there. She was like thinking he was a producer or something. Um, and uh, so she's like, all right, she's like, I'm sorry, you know, are you on game night? And he was, he thought the people were punking him at, um, Geek and Sundry. And, uh, he told her she should be on the show and she's like, really? And he, he goes, absolutely. They'd love to have you. So he calls me that day. I'm at actually another event here in Southern California called SoCal Games Day. And he calls me and I'm there and I have to go into the back so I can hear him. And he's like, oh, I, I met Deborah Ann Wall. I go, that's cool. And he's like, she's, she loves, she watches our show. And um, so uh, she continued to watch the show for a while and laughing at our goofiness. And uh, finally her husband told her, you know, just call them. And so she called us, uh, she called Kevin and said, you know, wrote Kevin and said, um, hey, I, I don't know if you were serious, but uh, I'd like to be on the show. And so um, this was June, I think. It was basically, or it might have been end of May, um, because it was she's on the first episode of that season. I think that's season eight, and um, or maybe seven. My oh, gosh, I don't remember anymore. Um, so she came on, and we had played a few games with her, and Kevin came over a little bit later and played something else. And then we played mostly light games. They might have been games that were nominated for the SDJ. That's why I'm not sure about May. Well, no, May would be fine, end of May, maybe beginning of June. 
So um, that might have been the second time she came over. But I had really kind of wanted her to come back just to play, because we picked lighter games. I had no idea, you know, at how interested she was in the deeper stuff. And uh, she loved it. You know, she had a great time. We brought her back for the one I really wanted her to try, which I think she only liked it, was Wingspan. But she handled it totally well. I don't, I don't know if she won. Might have been Dave. And uh, she was hooked. She had a great time. She loves coming over. It's hard. You know, we all have busy lives. She was definitely, it was before she had the baby. Um, so she definitely doesn't have quite as much time. Um, but it, she does come over a couple, you know, once or twice, once or twice a month if we're lucky. And uh, when she's in town, she has not been in town for, you know, since January. Um, but yeah, she's great. She's really a great player. She's really nice. Yeah, she's, I mean, I can't, she does fit in well because she's very much like us. Um, but yeah, she's awesome. And we're fortunate, you know, we're really lucky that she loves to play and she brought, she introduced us to Gabby. Um, Gabby's away right now too, so it's not great. I love Gabby, she's awesome as well. Both really, really smart people. And um, we look forward to having him back. We are, we did shoot our, we have not, we had not shot a four person game night since December. And then a week ago Thursday, not even a week ago, this last week Thursday, we had Nick and Mike Murphy over and uh, got in two games with four players, which is great. And, um, and I think the plan is this weekend before we leave, uh, we'll do one more filming day and it will be with four of us. I was gonna contact Deborah to see if she's in town but because we have four, I don't need to bother her right now because if she's in town, she just got back in and I, you know, she's not, when she's away, she's not with her son or her husband. So she does get to come back some and see them. But anyway, that's the plan. She was looking forward to coming and playing end of March, beginning of April, beginning of April. We probably won't have her over till near the end if she's still around. Um, I do have too much paint. Golden so flat line is so great. Is that a tube paint, uh, Skippin? I don't know all the lines. I do have too much paint though. Uh, I don't have enough though. I actually don't have enough standard acrylics. That's my problem. I have a decent amount and ultimately it's just the, my ability to, to put them on and get it okay. Woof, this is so tight. I do wish I could paint some of this stuff prior to assembly. I suppose I could try to take it apart, but yipes. What time is it? 12.15. Oh, thanks so much, D. I'm glad you like watching them. We love doing them. It's it's challenging, but we like doing it. It's a fun. I mean, Scott was the one that started us. He was like, "You guys have a good group. You should film it." And this was before tabletop started, and um, we're. I'm like, who is going to want to watch people play games for two hours? And so we were nervous. I mean, I did not want to go above two hours uh, when we started. I don't remember what the first one was that was long, but people were excited. I'm like, okay, I guess we're, it's okay to go a little bit long. Um, I mean, I know the numbers. <laughs> it's, not a lot of, it's not a lot of people that watch it all the way through, but we actually have a pretty good audience for that um, because I can, the average is pretty high, considering I'm sure there's plenty of people that jump in, look at it and go, nope. Um, it's funny because, you know, we that year we met Deborah, and then later that year we met Trey Parker, 
who's also a fan of the show. I don't know if he's still watching. Um, I chat with him via email, and he was saying recently he wanted to get together. We have not gotten together with them for four and a half years because we hung out with Trey uh, right before the, you know, tw tw uh, 2019. Went to the studios and stuff. That was really fun. And uh, I, w I was wondering if Nikki would, you know, Nikki actually used to be in animation. And I was wondering if we would see any of Nikki's friends at the, at their studio. But no. Uh, but they were doing a great episode at the time. And then they did one that same year of about board games. It wasn't just about board games, but that was one of the, like the B topic. And um, they mentioned our show and um, uh, Rodney. And um, that was actually the deal. Uh, they had done... Uh, we saw like episode three when we were at the studio. They were working on episode three and showed us the animatics for uh, a great, and it was just funny to see them laughing at the stuff. Right? They had just, you know, they they do this crazy thing where they write the script that week, um, and uh, but then later on, I think around in November, because when we were going to Dallas, everybody's like, message after we got to Dallas. Tons of messages. Oh my gosh, they mentioned you on Game Night on South Park. I'm like, wow. He had told me though, because he said, I'm going to try to work it in. He, they had done the board game breakfast thing. Although it wasn't about board game breakfast. It was, uh, what is that? Is that Nikki? No. Um, they were, it was Tegrity Farms or whatever. It was uh, uh, Randy's thing. And it was parodying uh, board Game Breakfast, which I'm sure Trey, uh, Trey watches. But uh, it was it was great. And he, so we played with, it was actually with Becca Scott and her husband, and Trey, and Nikki and I. And uh, he wanted us to play um, Watergate which is a two player game. You know, there are four, five of us there. So he and Nikki were a team and then I played against them and he taught us the game. And it was great. Uh, he was really excited about it and we really loved that game. And uh, I said, we'll have to say something about, you know, you know, not to call him out. And he's like, no, no, I want people to believe, know that I'm a serious gamer. Uh, we don't mention it too often. I actually didn't mention it at all initially because I felt strange. Um, basically until we did that Watergate, then we had started to talk about it. But I was just, you know, we're in a weird situation that we, we met him at Gen Con actually. So what happened was we were there and uh, he was, um, we need to give them badges to get in because it was the day, it was before the show started. And so we, uh, well, Trey, I mean, that would, it'd be fun to have, uh, Nikki was nervous about Trey too, cause she's a huge fan of that stuff. And she, you know, she's like, that would freak me out. And then we got to hang out with him and she did kind of fr freak out, uh, not too much, but enough. And it was funny cause I'm like, you don't have to worry, but he, um, uh, he has a big collection too. But anyway, so yeah, we had Becca and uh, her husband. It was fun. Nice people all of, all around. And we really loved Watergate. But it was also Friday. So basically Friday's a bad day. Uh, we, we actually went hung out with him a couple times. This first time, Friday's a bad day because they just finished the show. You know, so he was tired. Like, there's a lot of long, long uh, filming days. Uh, you know, or not filming because they're not really filming it, but uh, production days. And uh, and then it goes live. It used to go live on Thursday, right? I think. 
and so it may still go live on Thursday, but, uh, you know, they don't do as many episodes since the pandemic. Um, but yeah, he was tired. He got worn out pretty quickly. Not that quick, but, but the fun thing was, is he was asking us questions. It turns out, you know, obviously he grew up in Colorado, Denver, and I grew up in Denver. And, uh, so we talked about that. He asked about Dave, um, said he reminded him of somebody. And then, um, that was awesome. He asked us all questions. He really had a lot. He, he watched it. So he tends to watch it. He says, as he's going to sleep near bedtime, uh, he'd watch it, you know, cause we're mellow. I get it. Uh, he was, he was getting tired that night and he's like, I said, oh, I'm sure it's because uh, of our, you know, our gentle talking. You're used to falling asleep while we're talking. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he just sits and watches it, you know, and was learning new games and stuff, which is awesome. But anyway, so yeah, we're at the Gen Con and uh, he starts following me right after we go up and give him the badges. And um, he's like, I didn't know you guys were in L.A. I'm like, oh, yeah, because you thought you guys were in Texas. I'm like, no, just just BGG's headquarters. We film. It's like, wow. And so, um, it was really cool. And I chatted with him a couple times at the con and, you know, he was very excited. We were, we had started, which we don't do anymore. Um, the pre-order system, it was the first year we basically did it that year and then had to kind of stop. Uh, we had our pre-order system that we let the publishers do their pre-orders through a service we did and he loved it. He's like, just, you know, was going around picking up the games that pre-ordered everything he wanted to have that was available. A lot of publishers did it. It was really cool. I, I'm sad we couldn't keep it going. The issue was taxes. Um, you know, we ultimately could be responsible for the taxes and it was not, I don't know. It, I think we kind of still allow it sort of, but not through us. Like the publishers can put their, their stuff in there. And, uh, but anyway, so he was very excited about that. Had a ton of games to get home. Um, But yeah, Nikki was, it was funny when that one came about because we talked about it. I said, well, if you ever want to come on the show, you know, that would be fun. Uh, but he, you know, he's just so busy. But uh, when he invited us, I was, you know, I was talking to Scott about it because I, I had said something. I don't know, we filmed, it was a big day of filming. And then I went into the house to uh, work on just dealing with the files and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh my gosh, do you see that email? Because I was showing my screen for some reason. And I go, that's Trey Parker. <laughs> He's like, how do you know that? I said, because I know things about him. And uh, sure enough, he was asking us to come over and play, which was awesome. I hope that they have time. It'd be fun to see him. We have not seen him in a long time. He actually has a house, got a lot of houses. But he's got a house out kind of this way, a little bit further. And he's got a farm. He's got a farm on it. I don't know if he still owns it, to be truthful with you. This was two or three years ago, three years ago. Um, and Nikki, um, I mean, he had, we were actually making plans to get together. And then he was, it was just like, you know, at school where you finish the project, you get everything done and then you you get sick. And so he got sick. And then that was like at the beginning of us doing a bunch of traveling again. So we didn't have time. Um, I mean, we're basically getting to that time again here. We went to the P pinball festival two weeks ago. And then we will be going to uh, the gathering and then we will be going to BGG spring. And then we don't have gen uh, gamma. I mean, origins anymore. I, I miss origins. It's a great show. Um, that's at the beginning of June. It's in June. And the other thing was we, we were the people that run um, UK games expo years ago wanted us to go there and we I would love to go to game UK Games Expo the problem was is um, we just uh, it's a bad timing for us it's right after BGG spring and then it would be right before uh, origins so we could potentially go now obviously we would not be streaming we just go as attendees but I still would like to go cool is it 12 30 it is almost 12 30 you're going to be really busy, it sounds. I know, David actually wrote me, he's like, are you back the other day? This is Megas. And uh, 
I said, I am. And, you know, we'd been back for a little over a week already. And we're getting ready to go again. It's just, I, I don't mind traveling. I love it, actually. But my mom is just getting, you know, she's older. And we see her a lot. Um, we have for a while now. Ever since my dad passed away 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago, um, we've been, we spend more time with my mom, generally on the weekends. But just not being around for such a long time is not great. And my mom really, you know, it's, you know, she's, her friends are passing or just terrible things. It's all bad. You just don't want to get old. That is the reality. Okay. I painted two, but my last figures got sticky after drying, like really sticky. Any ideas why I'm, what I'm doing wrong? Gina, what paint are you using? Gina Spell, what paint are you using? Do you know? Do you recall? Um, they should not get sticky. Um, let me know and I'll stick around for a few minutes. I got to go get ready to go to the dentist. Um, uh, army painter. Okay. So Gina, our older army painter paints are not good. Uh, I'm sure they're okay, but I never bought any of the standard army painter paints. The only stuff I bought were these strong tone and, uh, a uh, couple different ones, medium tone or whatever. Um, and I like those. I, I actually sort of like those more than the GW, especially now. Now, I don't know what the new ones are like. I think they're similar, but um, I don't know why they get sticky. I don't think they're that bad that they would get sticky, but you probably need to varnish them. Um, what I end up using is matte varnish. Well, I use several different varnishes. This is a Canerictus mask varnish. You can, I mean, it's not cheap. There, this was a few years ago too. I think I bought this during the pandemic or just before. Um, I think it was during the pandemic, uh, like it's over. And then I have satin and I have ultra matte. Ultra matte's amazing, um, uh, but I generally use matte. Um, but the ultra matte's ridiculously flat. But this protects your miniatures. Um, I'm not certain why they would get sticky though. That is just very strange to me. Um, but a varnish might help. Uh, I actually, so you know, this miniature, I painted it 14 years ago or something like that. Uh, it's not sticky at all. Now this is mostly Citadel paints um, with varnish. I put a varnish on after it. Uh, and then I went back in and painted like the little gemstones with a gloss varnish, which that's an old paint that I'm using here. That's a, I think a testers brand. Is this the gloss? No, I think this is flat. This is flat finish. Uh, but these are ancient. Like these are at least 20 years old. I don't know that this company exists anymore. Polyscale, uh, but the gloss works and I still have tons of it because I don't use a lot of gloss. Um, but, uh, but definitely var you do varnish matte, huh? So there you go. Two gloss coats varnish followed by their anti-shine. Okay. Um, wow. I wonder what's going on, Gina. That does not make sense because you know, basically when the paint dries, it loses all of the solvents and it just becomes a resin, um, coating. It should not be a problem. Is your, do you have a lot of humidity? Where do you live, Gina? I might as well paint a little bit more brown while I'm waiting here before the, the end. Yeah, you varnish matte though. That should solve the problem. Maybe it's your varnish. It certainly could be. I mean, I've had, I've always been afraid of varnishes until I just realized I really have to use it. And I have to use it on these, um, the contrast paints. It's just absolutely essential. So, you, you know, you will lose it all. It's very, quite thin. Now, of course I'm putting multiple coats on, so maybe it's a little thicker. Netherlands. Okay. Well, that's definitely moist there. That could be what's going on. Oof, I almost dropped my brush. Um, I will say that the new uh, Army Painter paints are supposed to be great. Uh, and I don't think the old ones are that terrible, but they're not great. Um, but it's, it shouldn't give you that problem. I wish I had used them so I could give you some experience. But we live in a very dry climate, so that could be it. Um, I'm actually very nervous about putting these miniatures back in the, the plastic, you know, uh, vacuum form trays uh, because of potential sticking. So I, I'm, I'm 100% with you there, but I fortunately so far 
have not had any experience, only just my fears. Um, maybe try a different paint. The Netherlands is definitely moist. When we were, we visited, um, Amsterdam. And, uh, it was awesome. But it was definitely humid there. I still have to do his eyes. Uh, eyebrows. And his eyes. I, that is, I mean, you, you, sadly now you've got, you've instilled more fear in me because that is definitely one of my things. I just, I'm always worried that it will stick to the tray and pop the paint right off. Now I'm using, uh, what var uh, what undercoating were you using, um, Gina? Uh, that's what I do, I put them in black and plastic trays. Maybe that's it. Yeah, that's my worry. Um, oh yeah, wash your dish soap with, uh, your minis with dish soap. So I do that. Now the one thing you got to do when you do that is you have to clean it very, very well. I actually had a problem recently on a mini that it was not, it was not laying flat on the miniature. I had to like, you know, do some extra coats. But yes, you should clean your miniatures uh, to get the release. So they put all kinds of stuff in the molds to, for the, uh, these things to pop out. And that is potentially really bad news. I, I actually, so I, I clean all the mold lines and then I brush them with a toothbrush, an old toothbrush, and then uh, scrub off as much crap, including my finger, my, the oils from my fingers. Also, Gina, you should, if you, do you use a paint handle? Um, uh, do you use a paint handle? Paint handles are good, then you're not getting your fingers on there. I don't have very oily fingers, but Nikki's got more oily fingers and has residue, and that could cause problems as well. Um, I don't know why I'm pulling that. Oh, I should pull it off. These things tend to get, I was saying earlier, they could bend. Okay, let's cut back to, I'm not in the wrong camera there. Okay, let me put my other glasses. Um, but yeah, washing your miniatures is absolutely, I feel essential. I, I've painted a few and not necessarily regret it, but I've had plenty of fear because I know the, the agents, so they have like mold release and stuff like that, that they put on, on the inside of the mold that will be on your miniatures because they just pop them out and then, you know, break them down. And, and these are assembled, uh, in advance, but the ones you haven't, um, you had an experience. You really don't need to wash minis anymore. Really? Small run company. And what's the deal? Uh, this is uh, Scott telling us. Hmm. Well, that could be my, you know, my old school like mentality still sticking around. But is it, do they do things differently? The molds are not quite the same. Um, I can't imagine they rinse them, but maybe they do. Um, anyway, let me cut to the other camera. Okay, well, I am done for the day. I will not be painting on stream for a while. Uh, it'll be probably t a little over two weeks. Um, but uh, as a matter of fact, one week. No, we're at the beginning of this week. So it's three weeks from today. Yipes. Uh, it's worth to try washing them for sure. Um, and what do you have any, uh, what minis were you painting, Gina? I do need to get going, but what minis were you painting? Do you recall? Uh, what uh, game they were from or what uh, system they were. I did the, um, I did the ones from uh, Flamecraft, the dragons, and those were, you know, smaller. Thanks, James, uh, Jason, for joining me. Awesome. I'm glad you guys were here. Hey, David, take care. Horrified. Okay, so I have a friend, David, who's on, he just thanked me on the Twitch stream, uh, or t told me have a good day. He's painting his horrified minis, and they look pretty good. Um, but you know, those are small and those are soft plastic, uh, relatively soft plastic. They might not be the best minis to paint. Um, I don't know. It's a challenge because I want to paint those as well. Uh, Nikki's a huge fan of that stuff. And so, um, I don't know, David, David's just finishing his, he's not putting them in. And I think he's using Vallejo style paints for the D and D ones. Um, anyway, I better get going. You guys all take care. Uh, let me see if we can raid somebody. Um, Minor general fantasy mini paints. Okay. Um, let me see here. I got to go to the other thing here. It's interesting. I'm now using this new software. It's fantastic. 
but I'm not really, uh, I mean, actually so much faster. This is really great. Creator dashboard, stream manager. Yeah, I hope we have, <laughs> have fun at the dentist. You know how that is. Dentist is great. Uh, they're nice, and I, I've never had a problem with it. Let me see here. Agricola. Oh, that's a, that's a user. What's, uh, Derek's got me all afraid of, um, of just raiding people that you don't know. Well, goodness gracious. I know Miniac. He's painting minis, so we'll, we'll raid Miniac. Um, and say hello for me over there. It looks like he's, it's actually Scott painting there. So he's good, man. He's a great painter and lots of great stuff. So sorry for the YouTube folks you can't join over there, but the Twitch people, if you want to, if you want to raid with this, just say yes. We're getting ready to go. 29 viewers. Wow. Awesome. Okay, everybody. We'll take care and have a great one. Uh, I will see you on Thursday if you can. Nikki and I will be streaming, and then I will paint again in three weeks. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, YouTube people. Take care. Have a good one.